Hello and welcome to Paleo Logos. My name is Peter Brummel and thanks so much for joining me today as we begin a new series on the channel. Let's ask the question, what exactly is paleoanthropology? Paleoanthropology comes through several Greek words being fused together. One of those is the word paleo, which means early or ancient, and the other is the word anthropos, which is a Greek word meaning man or mankind. So when we put those together, we have early man. And that's essentially what paleoanthropologists study. Early humans who were preserved as fossils in the fossil record. Now, because paleoanthropology has, since its conception, been an almost entirely evolutionary-driven field, evolutionists have expanded the science beyond just the study of early humans to also the study of what they believe to be our closest relatives. And that is members of the tribe Hominini. And so, paleoanthropologists study this diverse group of creatures who are all classified under this tribe, this system of biological classification called hominini. And collectively, we call them hominins. So what exactly defines a hominin? Well, two scientists redefined the term hominin in 1999. And as of now, Generally, the scientific community accepts the concept that hominins are creatures who have exceptionally large brains in terms of the relation of brain size to the size of the body, and in addition are characterized by upright walking. Some examples of hominins are creatures like the famous Australopithecus afarensis lucy, who is found in Ethiopia. When we talk about hominins, we are talking about mainly, almost overwhelmingly, creatures that lived in the past. Because every single species of hominid that has ever existed has gone extinct, except for one. And that is Homo sapiens, the species to which you and I belong. So why are we as humans being classified with, together with non-human species? And the answer is that biology is a study which is based entirely off of the physical evidence. And when biologists look at these organisms, like Lucy and modern humans, we notice a lot of similarities between them. And so when we classify them, because they are so similar skeletally, we must group them together. Some creationists have a problem with putting humans in the classification scheme animalia at all. But the root there is a difference in defining our terms. When we think of the word animal as biblical creationists, we aren't thinking of ourselves. And that's because we're using a biblical definition of what an animal is. In the Bible, animals are non-human creatures who have what the Bible calls the breath of life in them. And Humans are separate from them because we have the image of God. But when we look at things solely from a scientific view, the kingdom animalia does not exactly line up with that. The kingdom animalia is designated by certain biological features, and humans are clearly grouped within that by their biology. So there's a difference between a biblical definition of an animal and a scientific definition of an animal. So according to a biblical definition, humans are not animals because we were made in the image of God. But according to a scientific definition, humans 
are animals because we have the certain biological characteristics that would classify us under the kingdom Animalia. Now, some people would protest to this and say that because we are made in the image of God and because we have souls, we ought to be put in our own separate kingdom. But the problem is that doesn't really work in terms of classification, because classification is based solely off of physical, describable characters, and the soul isn't something that we can necessarily describe. And so, when I talk about humans being in this group called Hominini, and under the kingdom Animalia, what you have to understand is that I'm not saying humans are animals in a biblical definition, but because they fall under the scientific definition of animals, we group them together in this group with these other creatures called hominins. So you might be wondering, what exactly is in this tribe, hominini? What types of creatures are classified in that classification along with modern humans? The answer is that there's quite a few different kinds of animals which go into that classification scheme. Here's a few main ones that are important for understanding this science. The first is the Homo group. Homo, as I talked about earlier, is the genus name for humans. And so all humans are designated by this word Homo in their scientific name. So whenever you see a scientific name and it says homo, that means that scientists believe that it is a human. So we have this homo group, which consists of quite a few different species of humans who lived in the past, like Neanderthals, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, and other creatures. The second group in the tribe Hominini is the Australopithecines. This is a group of creatures who were upright walking apes. And the Australopithecines, the most famous one is the Lucy fossil, of which we'll discuss in more detail in a later video. A third group is the Paranthropus genus. And Paranthropus was this massive heavy boned upright walking ape. This is back right here is a skull of Paranthropus and several things stick Paranthropus out such as a crest on the skull and giant uh, zygomatic arches which would have allowed for massive chewing jaws. A fourth main group is Artipithecus which is a more recently discovered genus and doesn't have quite as much uh, fossil material as some of those other genuses. So those are four main ones. So that's a brief introduction to exactly what we're studying. Paleoanthropologists study this group called Hominini, which has a variety of different genuses of extinct apes and humans grouped together. And in further videos, we're going to be taking a deeper look at some of the fossil evidence and the discoveries of these interesting and intriguing creatures. Thanks so much for joining me. Make sure to tune in next time for episode two. Don't forget to leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already.